The following program may contain coarse language, violence, nudity, mature subject matter, or scenes which may not be suitable for all viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon. My name is Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Worldwide toll free 800 610 7035. My email address is xone at xoneradiotv.com. On all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And our website, www.xoneradiotv.com. My guest this hour is Atala Dorothy Toy. She is an international, I'm sorry, she's an interdimensional communicator, author nature spirit photographer, and energy jewelry designer. She is the founder and president of Crystal Life Technology, Inc. Crystal Life is one of the oldest natural living web stores, uh, crystal-life.com. It uh, started in 1996, as, a, as well as a destined boutique located in historic town Geneva, Illinois. It provides the public with subtle energy tools, jewelry, and information, and an array of natural living products. Atella Toy's work pro, uh, focuses on education, demonstrating and teaching others how to access the latent human fac- facility of cooperating and for the common good with life forms of many dimensions, including animals, trees, rocks, nature spirits, spirit guides, and extraterrestrials. She provides tools to assist in this, including art photographs, jewelry, books, blogs, and workshops. Joining me now is Atella Dorothy Toy. And Atella, welcome back to the X-Zone. Thank you. It's nice to be back with you, Rob. You are one busy lady. Where do you find time to do all the wonderful things you do? Oh, thank you very much. Well, uh, if you're going above time and space, you manage to stretch it out to do a few extra things. You'll have to teach me how to do that. Well, I... <laughs> you fit enough in your day as it is. <laughs> now, Atella, you've written three books on consciousness, ranging from the philosophical to the pragmatic. Uh, they are "We Are Not Alone: A Complete Guide to Interdimensional Cooperation," "Night Spirits, Spirit Guides, and Ghosts: How to Talk with and Photograph Life Forms of Other Realms," and "Nature Spirits in American Trees." from Central Park to the Redwood Forest. I was wondering if you could tell them and the sequence of information that they provide. Yes. Uh, well, I started working interdimensionally back in 1996 when uh, the Melchizedek uh, asked me to work with them to present information about how to work with life forms in other realms. And uh, in the process of their teaching me, how to work interdimensionally, they would give me packets of information and then uh, explain that my job was to make it linear into a book form so that people could understand it. So over the course of the years, we started first with a philosophy, which was uh, we are not alone, and that's uh, about interdimensional and intergalactic society. Mm -hmm. And then from there we moved into uh, working and talking with the, the life forms that are here on Earth, nature spirits. And then from there, uh, as I learned to take photographs of the nature spirits, we worked into a book of 
solely uh, photographs, which is Nature Spirits and American Trees. That's uh, 64 photographs of tree spirits. Is that where the idea for so many... Um, uh, let me see. The, the Wizard of Oz has a section in it where the trees come to life. Is this where the concept comes from? Uh, yes, the same with uh, Lord of the Rings. Yes. The, uh, right. Uh, you know, we all know uh, back in our subconscious and in our imagination that, that these are real life forms. Mm-hmm. And many of us, uh, the old old ones, the Druids uh, and uh, the uh, indigenous people of all traditions, have always known that you could communicate with trees and plants. And, and that's really how medicine people knew what uh, medicines were of use, was, uh, asking the trees and spirits how they work. So, um, yeah, that's what I do. I actually talk to the the trees and the mm-hmm. plants and um, we share information well you know it's it's no secret that when you talk to your plants they thrive i i do that myself with my plants i love plants i feel very happy when i have a lot of plants in the house uh and and you know the, i've i've seen the difference between having music playing with no music playing so when people say oh, what are you talking about they have no concept what you and I and I'm sure many, many people around the world know that everything on this planet is alive. It is. Everything Everything is alive and we are meant to work in uh, community and cooperation with all these mm-hmm. life forms. We've just forgotten it. They trying to remind us and um, some of us are listening. All right, Atella, please stand by. You and I have to take our first commercial break. Exonation at Tella Dorothy Toy is our very special guest of this hour, and her website is www.crystal-life.com. That's crystal-life.com. And we'll be back on the other side of this two-minute commercial break. Don't go away. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Named one of the world's greatest psychics, Elizabeth Joyce is now giving readings worldwide via Skype. Elizabeth Joyce is recognized for her clairvoyant ability to help find missing persons, her analysis of dreams, past life regression work, mediumship, and her accurate predictions. Elizabeth has been a frequent guest on the X-Zone radio show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, now for several years. For an appointment with Elizabeth Joyce, call 201-934-8986 or Skype at Elizabeth.Joyce. And for more information, you can always visit Elizabeth Joyce online at www.new-visions.com. Welcome back, everyone. Atala Dorothy Toy is our very special guest this hour, www.crystal-life.com is her website. And before we go on, I, I would just like to ask you something, uh, uh, Atala. 
when we were talking in the first segment, you said that you have gone to other dimensions. What was it like the very first time that you realized that you were no longer in this dimension, but in another dimension? Well, I ha- was raised a Quaker, and I practiced yoga for many years, mm-hmm. so I was used to the concept of being able to go into spirit. But I never realized that actually when you go into spirit, it's not just silence. There's actually life forms there. So when they uh, started uh, speaking back to me, like many people, I went like, ooh, this is trouble. (laughs) But then they started explaining uh, that they were real and Mm -hmm. that we could work together and let's do some tests to test how they could help me and how I could help them. So um, it was with a lot of uh, good old American uh, show me Missouri type energy that I approached the whole issue. Now you have you've exhibited your nature spirit photographs at galleries and shows throughout the Chicago area, and your photographs can also be seen on your website. Um, how did you start photographing nature spirits? What was your what was the clue that? There was more to what you were seeing than the eye was was able to capture. Well, actually, uh, it was more I was invited to take photos. So I have uh, my family has a summer place up in New Hampshire, mm-hmm. uh, which I share uh, with a gnome. Right, with a gnome. And a gnome, yes. He he stays there uh, during the year, and when I come up for the summer, he goes to the garage and lives okay. there until I leave. So when I went up there one summer, he Mm -hmm. said to me, would you like to go out and take a photograph of a moss fairy? And I am not a photographer. I was not then a photographer. But I went like, sure, sounds like an adventure. So he led me out into the woods. Uh, I could see him psychically. And uh, sat me down in front of a a beautiful pine uh, tree and uh, had me take a photograph. I couldn't see it. Uh, when we went back, I put it into the computer. I had about 18 photographs and uh, couldn't see a thing. And he said, well, not this picture, not this one, not this one, this one. This is the photo with the moss fairy. I couldn't see anything. And he said, well, it's up in the upper right-hand corner or up here. And when I moved up in that area, I saw a moss fairy, which is in my book. Uh, so that that was the start. He made me a believer because he showed me. Um, some of your nature spirit photos capture very complex stories that have been imprinted in rocks and trees as well. Who or what is it you feel has created these stories? Well, I think there's um, a lot that we humans just don't understand. It's a uh, same thing with crop circles. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody, something is making these crop circles. If you look at some of the photographs I've taken, uh, there's a uh, 50-foot cliff down in Garden of the Gods in Illinois that depicts a, a love story of an elf. Now, the nature spirits, when I go into a park, I let the nature spirits know I'm ready to take photos if anybody wants a photo taken. So they led me to this place. Mm-hmm. They showed me the story and asked me to take the photograph. And it, it's a complex story. That photo is also in my books of a uh, uh, elfin lover and the woman uh, that he left to join the spiritual life. And it's all imprinted in a rock by some some force of nature that uh, is able to, to work with stone the way we work with paint. So where do these elves or gnomes come from? Well, they live in another dimension. Uh, they coexist with us uh, here on Earth. They're a different life form. Because their frequency is different from ours, uh, we're not used to looking at that. We have so much to do just mm-hmm. to master the third dimension that uh, we humans have focused on that. Those of us who uh, broaden our consciousness into seeing more bands of frequency uh, can see into these worlds. And if you're lucky enough to get trained uh, in how to see it, then you can control this travel into these worlds and, uh, and communicate with these beings. If you're not lucky, then you 
uh, people think you have mental problems. So how hard is it for someone to learn how to control their frequencies so they can actually see these these wonders of nature that coexist with us but in different frequencies? 